You know what separates a good data engineer from a great one? I have met brilliant data engineers with decades of experience who are expert in SQL. They can write stored procedures. They understand PySpark. They can build robust data architectures, but they struggle to communicate their value effectively. I have seen countless data professionals struggling with this critical problem. So today I'm going to share something very special with you. I recently conducted a live session with a data engineer who has 10 plus years of experience working with SQL, writing SQL queries, creating stored procedures. And in this video, I will give you an extract from my real time feedback session with him. Whether you are preparing for interviews or seeking promotion in your current company, the strategies I have shared here will definitely help you showcase your values effectively. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this really helps. Uh, I'll tell you one more reason why we are doing this activity. Yeah. Uh, in many of the companies uh, like Amazon, they will not have a typical question answer, question answer kind of an interview. They will have a story based. Mm. And that story can be your project related. Tell me about a project that mm. you faced a lot of challenge. What was mm. the challenge? How did you overcome it? What was the result? Right. Mm. And there is a methodology like star situation, mm. task, action and result. And there will be some follow up questions. So when you are telling about your experience, you are also sharing a lot of projects you have done. And I can see you already have done some very good projects, right? And these projects can relate to like <clears throat> a question may come. Tell me about a situation where there was a very critical problem in the production and nobody was able to figure it out, but you were able to. What was the problem? How did you figure it out? What was the result? What were the actions you took, right? Mm -hmm. So you mentioned about uh, when working with you mentioned that uh, you were writing stored procedures, you were writing SQL mm -hmm. queries, you were also doing some root cause analysis, right? You mentioned that. So think about some uh, situation where you actually did it and then explain and uh, uh, increase the criticality of the issue because nobody can question you that, okay, you are wrong. These are stories. These are not something like code in Python or something. Somebody can mm -hmm. challenge you, right? and increase the criticality, increase the challenge, what you did to resolve it. Okay. At the end also, when many people say that and I was able to fix, the, I was able to debug the issue. There was some problem with the joins or the filter conditions. So I fixed it, we deployed it, code and code was fixed, right? Many people will stop here. But I want you to do is since you have a 10 plus years of experience, it is expected from you okay. that you have to say at the end and then I built something that made sure that this problem will not happen again in future. It could be as basic as an Excel checklist that I created a checklist of 20 points and any code that is deployed in the production, a developer as part of unit testing will go through that checklist and will say done, 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 and then we'll move the code to production, something like that. Or it could be an automation test also that I created a framework that do a unit test and it was a rule based unit test and any developer can add new rules and integrated to the framework. So when the code is moved, the pipeline is deployed. It goes through that test. If all the checklists are cleared, the pipeline moves ahead and the pipeline failed. Something like that, right? So if you can say something like that, uh, yeah. as even a basic as an Excel checklist or something automation in the framework, it works very well. It actually closes the loop. It exhibits that you have a 10 plus years of experience, right? Uh, just want to say one thing. I want to keep these sessions very casual and interactive. These are not mm -hmm. like because you people are not freshers, right? That they don't yeah. have any understanding. You already have 10 years of corporate experience. Yeah. I feel with 10 plus years of experience, what people generally lack is not the technical knowledge, but they are not able to exhibit their 10 years of experience. That's how, right? Yeah. I can already see you have done some very good projects like the uh, project you were talking about initially, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, where you were working as a support engineer, you were the only yeah. person, you were running the queries and then generating the Excel for, for the data and then sharing it with the users, right? I would have loved to hear if you would have said that, okay, once the senior engineer move out, yeah. uh, you were obviously extending the business hours, sleepless nights you mentioned. Uh, you, in parallel, you started working on an automation framework for it because you are doing manually and you realize there are few reports for which again you have to run the query export it okay. maybe change some so what you did is you created a simple framework with okay. parameters so now rather than having a hard coded values in sql it was a basic framework that will accept the parameters put it in the query will run it once the query is done it will export the data into excel file so your life is easy right you can just submit it and let it run maybe the query is running for two hours but at the end of two hours you have an excel file so, actually we i i forgot to mention that actually we had uh, one uh, chain yeah. there we 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 are actually orchestrating 
uh, yeah. once once after this process if this completes it will generate this uh, it will send this mail then it will have all the accounts checked everything we yeah. can see then we will move forward we will keep one hold at one place we will check everything whether these things has been completed or we have a lot of checklist and all um, yeah. it's a good thing that you uh, reminded me so that i will next time i will yeah. definitely try to put all these things at once yeah so you mentioned about the count check also right now mm -hmm. i'll tell you what this reconciliation the count check which you did is actually very important and it is widely practiced in almost all the enterprises I have worked, right? Okay. So if you're doing a count check, maybe a kind of a financial balancing thing, amount check, right? Uh, if you mention all these things, if you say that I built a framework that can do this, it can be part of your data quality framework. It can be part of your reconciliation framework. Uh, I'm telling you all these things because uh, in your next interview, probably the enterprises are already doing it. And if you have done that, you already score a 10. Uh, Say you're giving an interview, you can say that I don't have a hands-on experience in Databricks, but I know PySpark, uh, maybe in some other, uh, as uh, say Azure Synapse Analytics or EMR, somewhere or Glue, somewhere you have done, or maybe on-premises, right? Uh, but you don't know data, but I'm good with that. But what project I'm doing, if you have done a similar project successfully, I will onboard you for sure. Because okay. I'm starting a project, I don't know what challenges will come and what will be the solution. But you are somebody who has already fixed it. When it comes to technology, you could be one of the engineers because it's very rare that entire team has just one engineer. There will be fellow engineers. So maybe on the Databricks side, you are a little low, but I have fellow engineers in my team already who are expert in Databricks. But I okay. don't have anybody who has already done this project, right? So when you are uh, sharing your uh, project details, try to bring in all these things into that right and it's okay that if you have an idea but it was not implemented still bring it into the discussion and uh, at the end what i feel interview is all about uh, having the best 45 50 minutes right yeah. and uh, i have seen many candidates who were never good but their communication skill was very good. They knew how to drive the interview, right? If it is a, a typical interview where, okay, question one, this, question two, this, question three, this, I personally don't like that kind of uh, interview style. And many places it's not even followed. Even in Amazon, nobody, uh, like I gave six interviews, six plus one. No, but none of the rounds were like that, right? So everybody, people are like, when you talk to directors or VP level, which is generally the final, final round, they will, ask about the projects what project you have done and they will actually ask you the question uh, which are very real to them what they are facing and they'll see if you have the solution for it right so yeah uh, maybe uh, i think you ha already have some very good projects you talked about end framework where uh, you were submitting code i'm assuming maybe a sql or something in the excel file and then it will read the excel and will run sql or in sequence and will generate the report uh, you uh, how i would have said is that Initially, I understand your problem there that there was nothing to learn. All you were doing is putting in the exit. Uh, you uh, could have explored the framework there, how that framework is working, right? And one of the reasons could be that you try to join that core engineering team that was maintaining yeah. that framework, but it was not a possibility. And so you were stuck with the manual work of uh, yeah. putting uh, queries. And then at that time, you got an opportunity for you thought, okay, uh, exhibit that what you were getting in and not in, in made you switch in 1.5 years right so you were aspiring to join the team that was actually owning that framework uh, mm. enhancing and maintaining it but it was not a possibility for you so you were stuck with the manual work you just felt that your learning was not growing in the manner you wanted it to be at mm. that time which also had a similar uh, project scenario where uh, you were supporting reporting and visualization by creating stored procedure sequels and so and you were getting an end-to-end -end exposure so you went ahead opted for that opportunity right uh, so so overall i think you have a very good set of uh, projects you are also explaining it in a very good manner i know many time people say that okay what was that project i don't know they could not explain that is a bad situation but you were explaining it in a very good manner uh, just practice it because i'm pretty sure you will encounter some interviews where they'll focus on your projects rather than your technical skills right okay i think this is good and we can have this casual interactive uh, discussions anytime, right? I don't, I believe in deep understanding, deep understanding of the project, how the things work rather than uh, Q&A style. So I personally don't feel, I know many of the people online, they prefer having that. What is, this is the question, what should be the answer? But I think this doesn't go, maybe for the freshers it is applicable because there is no project to ask about, but with the experienced candidate, I believe, asking about the project challenges, how did they uh, solve it? What could have been the alternate solution? These are the better questions, at least what I feel, right? 
I hope you find this session as valuable as I did. Now, if you are serious about your data engineering career, I have created another video where I shared my 17 plus years of experience all aggregated into a single video. The link is in the description box below. I will highly recommend you to watch that video. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, share it with your friends. And do let me know what was the biggest takeaway for you from this video. Until next time, bye-bye.